Welcome back to another episode of Picking Up the Pixels RPG Love. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Musum. Hello. And Mina. Hi. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M1. The ones are numbers. Just a quick plug. Get all the cool early access behind the scenes audio. Sometimes the pre-show of uh, Pup shows up in uh, the Outcast, which is the uh, the uncensored outtakes before we go live uh, every week. Uh, sometimes Pup shows up. Not not this month, but uh, we forgot to record uh, a significant conversation we had about <laughs> reviewing games. Uh, whoops. But that's okay. Um, it... Uh, you can check out all that stuff there, and then you help me uh, pay for these shows because, boy, are these things uh, not cheap, unfortunately. But uh, <clears throat> the the cost makes sense because I don't think we've ever had an outage, knock on wood. Um, so that's <laughs> patreon.com slash E1M1. Misum, what have you been playing this past month? Uh, a few things. So starting out, uh, I played a butt ton of uh, Fel Seal Arbiter's Mark uh, towards the beginning uh, yeah. of the month. Um, I, so I think last time I might have my timelines mixed up between episodes, but I think last time I was like, yeah, I don't really have a class that can recruit animals. So I don't know if that's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. And then I immediately unlocked the Wrangler, which (laughs) lets you wrangle monsters. So the um, Wrangler is a really great class name. It's, uh, it's fun. It's kind of got a, uh. It's not a cowboy aesthetic, but it still somewhat makes me think of a cowboy looking at it. Right. um, Like, all the new classes in that game are great. Um, So, I played... Gosh, what was I doing? So, I was going through a bunch of missions, and I got to the last area of the game, and um, at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to go get the secret character before I do any more missions, um, so I can get him more leveled up than I did last time, and... I thought I was supposed to troll this area called, I think it was Gogo Bomb City. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kept patrolling in it and I kept getting my butt handed to me because I did this custom difficulty that scales all the enemies to me and gives them access to all the classes and skills that I have. Right, right. And I just kept getting slaughtered and I, I literally lost hours to this battle. And finally I looked online and I'm like, why can't I beat this? Like, is there a work? <laughs> is there something else I can do? And I didn't have to do that battle at all. I just had to leave Gogo Bomb City, go back, oh, no. watch a cutscene, and it's done. There you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so dumb. So like, basically, I did that. Went and got the character, and I was so like done with losing on that game that I haven't played it since. <laughs> right. Oh no. Um, but that's that's still a really great game. Uh, it's really great for tactics. Um. I, the DLC is really cool. Like, if you haven't played it, I think you should probably just get the DLC to start with. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but it's also, like, it, it's a weird DLC in that the content in it is classes and gameplay stuff. It's not, there are very few maps they added. There's no new story content or anything. Oh, like okay. So it's a weird balance, but... I think the things it adds are interesting enough, and I think the new classes are cool enough. Like, the whole basis of the samurai class, for instance, in it, is that you inflict debuffs on yourself, and then the samurai class gets damage bonuses for the amount of debuffs that you have on him. Um, oh, and then he has okay. Like another skill that, like, cleanses and heals him and stuff and resets it. Uh, interesting. So it's kind of a it's a cool push-pull system, you know? Um, and then of course the other two classes are both kind of monster based. Like one of them is, uh, I forgot the name of it, but you effectively have these little baby monsters that you summon. And when you attack, they attack as well, or you can dismiss them to do some sort of buff or healing thing. Ooh, Uh, that sounds like my, my jam. Yeah, it's, they're all pretty cool. And like you unlock most of the new classes through sending your guys on missions, like I was talking about last time. Um, but uh, I I think Fell Seal is awesome. I feel like this uh, indie dev very much deserves to be supported. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd encourage everyone to go, to go get it if you like Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, let's see. So uh, also played a bunch of Xenoblade Chronicles. Mm. Um, which, you know, it's kind of funny because, like, a non-RPG I've been playing is Ghost of Tsushima, Mm -hmm. and the basis of Ghost of Tsushima is having little to no 
HUD or map like element <laughs> right. markers or quest pointers. <laughs> right. And then Xenoblade Chronicles is all of that. It's <laughs> We're just gonna triple the HUD. Yeah. Like I like both approaches, don't get me wrong. It's just it's jarring a little bit going back <laughs> right. and forth. But uh, one of my friends showed me the really obvious way on how you track quests in that game that I hadn't been doing before, and it made Xenoblade Chronicles a thousand times more suitable for me. It's oh. It just kind of involves a little bit of menu diving. Like, you basically press down on the D-pad to bring up your map list. You press uh, one of the right shoulder buttons to highlight it or to track a quest, and then it will basically show you exactly where it is on the map. Um and then if it's nothing showing up, then you can read the quest text. And it's usually you got to find a person there and then you got to dig through your, like they have a social sphere thing. I forget what it's called. Um, they, they don't call it a social sphere. It's a non-obvious name. <laughs> it's mm. like, like region con- something. You're you like know. your connections manager where it's like, hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's close. And it just shows all the people in the town and you can highlight one and it'll tell you when they are active in the town to find them. And then oh, okay. time doesn't really matter in that game except for when these things show up. So you just go, you know, change the time to whenever they're going to be active and go there. Um, but uh, I, I still really like this game a lot. Um, I think I'm going to be playing it off and on for probably the rest of the year and still not beat it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. I, I know that this is the one of those games where it's like there's so much side quest. Yeah. That if you try doing it all, you're in for like a 200, 300 hour experience. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like if. Make a decision on if you really actually want to do right. every side quest or, you know, maybe maybe shave a couple of it off and tell yeah. the story. <laughs> All right. Well, and so what I've been trying to do is do the timed ones because uh, they aren't actually like the way the timed ones work in that game is when you progress the story, they stop becoming available at some point. Mm. Um, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been trying to bust those out, and a few of them I didn't think I could do, and then I started looking online and realized, oh no, the map is just nonsensical on how to get to this region oh. that I haven't figured out how to get to. Right. Oh. To get to this point on the south end of the map, I need to go you know into a cave at the north end of the map. That like, is oh, just right. like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is just the same, oh, where the man. map is nonsensical sometimes, and you're like, I can't go there. There's Look at all these big old dinos and stuff yeah. in the way they're like level 50 or 60 i'm yeah. level 10 yeah <laughs> it's uh god two is so much uh it is so much work like it's amazing to me how many things they got right in one that somehow they got wrong in two like right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like it's the same systems like the buttons are very similar it's just i mean i guess it just comes back to their lack of ui designers and not communicating as clearly but wow, mm. yeah um, I don't know. Two is one of those games that I love, and then I start playing, and then I remember all the defects with it that <laughs> make it hard for me to play. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and then I also, um, I did a Twitter poll where I was like, I'm going to play this old game series. Which one should I do? And, uh, Front Mission won that one. So, oh, yeah. Um, s- start a game on Front Mission for DS. Uh, this is a port upgrade whatever thing of the super nintendo version adds a uh, second story to it um i have never beaten this game uh, mm. i have played the first mission at least a dozen times like <laughs> over the course of owning it uh, me too yeah <laughs> it's uh i don't know man like i've, I've started watching videos because i'm determined to actually get through the thing this time and i need to understand how its systems work and i'm i'm not quite there yet but i i understand a little bit more and that's they have three weapon classes you have long short and melee mm-hmm. and those determine which mech goes first when you attack because whenever you attack someone they get to attack too right um, right and the problem is much like the recent battle tech is you know you're losing limbs and body parts that are going to cost you money to fix later on your Wanzers. So, um, the, uh, I have not beat the second mission yet, which is what made me start diving into YouTube videos, which <laughs> s- surprisingly not a ton of, uh, 
of Front Mission <laughs> 1 advice out there. Right, right. Um, I did find one that I think is going to work for me, but it just cracks me up because the guy at the intros, he's real cheerful and talking. He's like, yeah, no, no, you just do X, Y, Z. This means this. And, oh, well, the main character died this first mission, but that's the one mission he's allowed to die. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to, like, the second mission and starts getting his butt kicked, too. He's like, well, we might have to do this one again. And it's, oh, jeez. It's not, um, it's not filling me with confidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's had the best advice in explaining the system to me so far. Um, right. I just got to figure out how to appropriately gear up my five Wanzers and loosely follow a walkthrough so I don't miss the uh, secret characters and make it through <laughs> at least one of the campaigns. Um, and I got to tell you, the warring factions in Front Mission, it does not help that one of them is called, I believe, UCS, and the other is called OCU. <laughs> it is very... <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> very difficult to follow. Yep. Um, but it's... Uh, I started diving into a little bit of the lore, too, of the Front Mission world, because it's always felt to me like it took place in kind of a Vietnam, Philippines-type place, but it turns out it's just a made-up new continent, and that's oh, part okay. of the deal with the naming of these two forces that are fighting. Oh, okay. Um, but it's... Uh, I feel like that game's cool. I like mechs. I'm starting to wish that mech games focused less on um, always having your guys lose limbs on their mechs and costing thousands of in-game currency to fix it. Like, Right. That seems to be a real popular thing, but I seem to be terrible at it, which... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'll, uh, I've been trying to make myself play it like... Um, a, a, at least two or three times a week, like attempt the mission and, and just not like completely give into it. So uh, the last game I've been playing is one my nephew Marshall bought for me uh, the other night and I installed and uh, I thought this was going to be a Dark Souls clone and it is a remnant from the ashes. And in oh, my opinion... Yeah. While it certainly borrows ideas from Dark Souls, it is very much its own thing. Because um, it is way easier than Dark Souls. Uh, Thank goodness. Not that it's easy. Like, I think the boss I beat today took me five or six tries. But it is... Gosh, it it kind of cribs from some of the best, right? Because like, there are elements that make me think of Destiny in it. There's elements that make me think of Diablo 3 in it. Um so what this is, is a third-person action game where your primary weapon, like you basically equip two guns and a melee weapon. Um, the uh, And then on top of that, you have, you can equip a uh, mod in your gun, which will do things like add fire to it or let you summon guys to help you or make a healing circle. Um, you have traits that accentuate you in different ways, like raise your health or... Uh, your spirit, which lets you use your mods, um, or like increase the amount of experience you get, or things like that. Um, and then, uh, ah, crap, there's a third thing, but I forgot it. It it's, doesn't matter. So, this is a, I think this game is primarily made to play in co op, and it's like a three player co op. Um, mm. And the naming convention in the game really makes me think of Destiny because everything is called, like, the enemy is called the root. Um, oh, right. <laughs> who is called this apocalypse world and you have to go find the founder and the like with these very like generic names that are all capitalized you know um and then the weapons in it like they aren't like designed to a, a destiny caliber of shooting but the weapons are kind of few and far between uh, mm. and you can get them all and i think a lot of the game is about adjusting your setup for whatever you're encountering or having difficulty with. Um, oh, okay, so you don't have a whole... You don't have a bunch of tools, but you, you're you kind of mixing and matching those to suit the encounters. Right. So, like, you'll have, like, an armor set that might increase how quickly your spirit recharges, which lets you use your mods more, or, like, you have an armor set that'll uh, increase critical damage... Um, or like there's a melee build one where like it reduces damage you receive from rifles, but 
it makes the enemies more aggressive towards you. Mm. Um, and then it's kind of the same deal with the weapons. Like I think I've, according to steam, I've played about seven hours. Um, and I don't think most of that was pause time. I think I actually played, um, and the, uh, uh, Ah, shoot, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the weapons. Um, I think I have about eight weapons. Uh, there's a lot of, like, weird secrets in the game, but all the weapons feel pretty different from each other. So, um, like, I picked up a submachine gun that takes my pistol slot, and then I picked up another submachine gun that shoots, like, fiery bullets permanently. Ooh. Um, I picked up, like, a sniper rifle, which only has one shot in it, but is, like, super invaluable in the world map in this game. Like... Hmm. A lot of my tactics on exploring solo in the world map is I'll find some enemies at a distance, start shooting them, because you can, like, the game is very much a shooter in that uh, you can headshot things and they die, right? Like, it's, oh, okay. there are stats and there are numbers there, but it seems like, uh, like, well, no, actually, you know what, Marvel, uh, Marshall explained this to me. So, evidently, what the game does is what... It takes, uh, it's almost like a light level in Destiny in that you have a gear level that for some reason you can only see when you load your game. Like you can't actually <laughs> see it in the character menu, but okay. all the enemies that spawn are one gear level above whoever your highest party member is. Um, okay, sure. And it's also like Destiny in that there's only, I think, like three or four levels of that. And once you're, so like if you, are five level five gear levels apart from the highest member in your party, you won't do any damage to the enemies. Ah, uh, right, right. Um the other really cool thing is this is a it it is heavy on story in certain aspects, but it is all the levels are procedurally generated. Oh, uh, cool. You don't know what <laughs> bosses you're gonna get. Bless you, you don't know how the tile sets are gonna be laid out. Um I've only played the one game, so I don't have a second character to compare it to, but I suspect it's a little bit like Warframe in that you get these, here's this room and here's this room, and it's going to randomly decide which of these to attach to each other. But Right, right. Um, we encountered, we didn't encounter a boss that Marshall hadn't seen. Like, he'd played, I think, three different characters or something at that point. Just because he was really into it and he kept trying to get friends into it, so he kept starting new characters with those friends. To try. <laughs> right catch him up to his main but uh the uh um like we encountered we had at least two kind of survive x amount of time horde type encounters you know um which both of those like we had to try a couple times to get through it but it was it was very much just okay go back to base maybe upgrade some stuff maybe re-equip now come back we'll try a new strategy mm. um but it's it's a really cool game. Like, part of me thinks you will like it, Boston. Like, if you ever see it, it on... It sounds like it, yeah. If you ever see it on sale, you might pick it up. Uh, I'm, we're I on... might be adding it to my is there any deal alert list right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're we're playing on PC, uh, but, like, I started playing this game last night, and I played, like... Well, just put do the math. I played seven hours between last night and this morning. Like <laughs> right. between last night and the recording of this show. <laughs> yeah, like it's a really cool game. Like the movement is not as stiff as as like Dark Souls. Like the things it has in common with Dark Souls is you know you're about to fight a boss because there will be a mist gate into the boss area. Right. Um, so it's it's not a surprise. Yeah. Like when you die, you keep all your experience and everything. It's Okay. Like you don't lose any progress, but they do mm -hmm. have like checkpoints that are reminiscent of bonfires that refill your. So would you say it's visually like Dark Souls, but not like? I don't even know if I'd, because I'd it, say that. Like, like to it, me, Dark Souls is like super punishing when you make a mistake and when you die, you tend to lose a lot, and it it just feels like a. I mean, it's it's the it's the kind of punishment where you know that you messed up, but at the yeah. same point, it's it's very difficult for for someone who yeah. like casually makes a mistake or two. 
and all I don't, the time. <laughs> I don't. That's what I think of too when I think of Dark Souls. And I've mm-hmm. always heard this game was Dark Souls with guns, and I couldn't disagree more. I think the only thing it has in common with Dark Souls is Miss Gates before boss, and it has an Estus Flask equivalent called uh, Dragon Hearts. That you okay, get, so you it get has like some like three light, of them, light yeah. mechanical aspects of it. That doesn't yeah. feel like Dark Souls to me, though. <laughs> yeah, like this that game, could be anything. I don't yeah. think this is anything like Dark Souls. I like traversing the levels makes it feel almost like an old, <clears throat> like when D- Diablo procedurally generated like levels. Mm-hmm. It kind of, I say that I don't even does three procedurally three does or, slightly in, not in, not as much as the other ones. Ways. But yeah, yeah, it's not very. It you know so we had a we had a really good conversation on TVGP last week about the lasting effects of some larger tentpole RPG releases. I don't even not even gonna name them here because I don't want to record this for like three hours. Um, but <laughs> it sounds very much like this is one of those. Um, this is one of those titles that like we don't have the term yet for. It has stolen, not stolen, sorry. It has used some of the mechanics from Dark Souls that like Estus flasks and the mist gates and the bonfires and stuff like some of the non-combat mechanical stuff, but it doesn't take any of the combat. You know, it doesn't take any of that like um, really deliberate movement and difficulty and the the punishment. It doesn't take any of that stuff. It just kind of takes the the rest of the game and i think the hardest part language wise with games now is the the soulsborn series has been so impactful on so much stuff that like it has touched so many other games but we don't really know what the language is of like it takes the non-combat stuff from dark souls and then does its own sort of diablo destiny thing with the rest of it yeah yeah and that's that is the best description i could come up for with it like it's yeah this very much is a game that is lower budget than any of the games we've talked about like it is like it's a cool world you're exploring but like you know the graphics could be better sure um the uh what else i say the uh the movement's pretty fluid in it It has nothing to do with what we were just talking about but (laughs) (laughs) but it's nice to know it's not this like sluggish thing you know yeah like honestly like opening mission like i'm walking around like okay this is going to be like dark souls so it's going to kill me at the end and it didn't do that it just it made me melee fight some guys like and like you can move pretty quick in that game um Mm -hmm. but one of the coolest aspects of the game is just like all the weird discovery things. So like Marshall was showing me a bunch of secrets that he didn't know till way late uh, that you could get at the start. Like, so the submachine gun I got, like you basically go into the first world and find this key card and then you go back to base and there's a basement in the base and you go down to the basement and then like the key card goes to a door on that, but you got to go find a fuse to activate the door. And once you do that, you go in and I think you need two players to do this. Now that I'm talking about it. Um, you go in and there's like a giant, like, you know, one of those video game exhaust fans that's like 50 feet high. Uh, right. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's spinning. What you have to do is have someone go take the fuse back out. So that exhaust fan turns off and then you go behind it and there's a machine gun. Oh, um, right. Or like this morning we found, like we were in this alternate reality and we found this giant tower and there was like a puzzle in front of the tower. And like one person needs to go to this place behind the tower to get the instructions for the puzzle. And the other person needs to move throughout the puzzle. And once you unlock it, you get the opportunity to buy this cool set of armor called like void armor or something like that. And Hmm. there's just all sorts of weird little cool things like that. And it's not... It doesn't beat you over the head with loot like a like a Borderlands or something else does. Mm-hmm. Um, like all the weapons, the weapons have a. I think the thing I love about the weapons is they simultaneously feel and look like pieces of crap, but also feel epic, like in their own right. right. Like it's right. A, it's a really cool balance they've struck with them, and um, hmm. I don't know that it's a super balanced game in terms of like, like I just got a beam rifle today, and that 
seems kind of broken in terms of the rest of the game, but it's really fun to use because it looks like this rinky dink sci fi sniper thing that just shoots out a constant radiation beam. Yeah, that's the stuff. Um, <laughs> I guess it sounds really good. Yeah, I, I'm loving it. It's definitely not perfect. Like, I could. Uh, like it's it's not always clear where you're supposed to go for the quest for instance um there's uh something to know like there's destructible objects in each world so like when you're on earth the destructible object is anything wood and if you walk into a room and there's a bookshelf if you destroy that bookshelf there's probably a hidden room behind it oh Um, okay so there's there's just like weird like hidden crap everywhere that seems pretty cool so i'm I'm excited to see what the rest of this game has to offer. Um, and it's cool having something that I can play with one of my nephews too. So, yeah, cause we just, he's, a, he's into very competitive games from the sounds of it. And mm. I'm not, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but anyway, so that is all I've been playing. All right, Mina, how about you? So we're going to start off low and then we're going to end high on my my okay. games i like we're a theme start off <laughs> i dig it because <laughs> so, I, I i i don't want to dwell on this too much but i okay. played tales of crystoria which is their new mobile tales game so since it's um, showing up first on your list i guess i should delete it off of my phone <laughs> this, this game oh my gosh so like it's Oh, okay, so first of all, this game is like a Tales clone of Grand Blue Fantasy, if anybody knows oh. what Grand Blue is. Okay. Um, so it's it's going to be super grindy. It's got like all the elements of Grand Blue put in. Yeah, um, 50 different types of materials. Right. Yep. And that's, to me, that's not, that's not the, that's not the problem. The problem lies in... The epic amount of bugs and oh, it's problems. <laughs> like, like this is this is not like oh the game is bad. It's like oh no the game is unplayable. Right, it doesn't um, function. So we're talking like people can't log in. Two people are are unable to play dailies like daily elements of a game. Like it's it's permanently locked them out. Three. Um, the game just has like random crashes that happen because of voice files in the game. Oh no. Uh, like I, I could sit here and probably name like 50 different types of horrible bugs that make the game unplayable. <laughs> are you, are you playing it on phone or is it available on steam too? I it's, it's on, it's on, uh, only phone type things and okay. emulator if you emulate on your sure computer but here's the thing the problems persist across everything oh, okay. uh, there's fps problems the it the game will heat up your phone like crazy <laughs> oh, uh, boy. like burns my hands to hold sometimes and the the thing the, the thing is is like all right i like maybe i would put up with some of these bugs if the problem was just like oh like this has only gone on for like a week and they're clearly working on it these bugs have persisted since the day one of the beta and the beta testers from months ago had reported all of these bugs right and not not a single one has been taken care of over months that's that's real disappointing it's not like oh we put out a bad patch once it came out and you know sorry we're working on it just like yeah you know just radio silence see you guys later yeah, it's it, it really has been radio silence. They seem to not be acknowledging these problems. Like the only like and and the thing is is like the community they can't bear that. The yeah. only thing that they've done to like the only patches they've done is like whenever somebody's found an exploit or whenever there's like some something going wrong with the gotcha element of the game where uh like, right. Oh, people were getting like extra pulls here or there or something like right. that. Right, or like, like people oh, couldn't like, buy fix currency. That. Like fix that immediately. Whoa. Yeah. So the I don't like that. That that smacks of uh greed and that smacks of you know, just not caring about the fan base. 
it it um, doesn't it doesn't feel good at all where it's like hmm this seems you know i i feel like a lot of people especially with live service games throw out those accusations of like not that you're doing this, but like you always see it online where it's like, oh, we were having fun. So you got to patch that out. Right. And but in an instance <laughs> like this where it's like the game is genuinely broken. But if I was getting one extra pull on an 11 pull banner, you fix that in like 24 hours. That doesn't feel good. That feels bad. Right. Yeah. So like for me, I wasn't able to log in for like maybe two days. I was having login problems where it, it would crash on the title screen. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, is if you transfer your account between like Android and iOS, normally when what games tend to do is they're like, Oh, well your currency will become permanent in game currency. You can't, you can't, you can't just like, you know, use it as paid currency. I don't know why oh, that sure. is, but, but I'm sure there's some sort of like iOS Android shop thing that prevent like I'm sure there's a valid reason because this happens across all kinds of games. Right. In this game, if you transfer your account between Android and iOS, they take all the currency away. All like the even your free currency, all of it. They wipe it clean. Oh, that's you lose weird. The heck. So I was having problems with my phone and I wanted to try and see if I could use it on emulator. And it's like, well, you would have to spend all of your currency and you don't get currency <laughs> in even amounts to do polls. Oh, so course. I had to, so I had to wait until I played the game enough that I got enough <laughs> to do a 10 poll. Otherwise I would have just been throwing currency away. Oh my God. Um, and there's so many problems that I could just go on and on about, <laughs> but it's just kind of like, oh, what's the point? Like, I'm most importantly, talk. it's at the bottom of your list for this month. <laughs> it's it's so bad. I I honestly would play a game that was super greedy but playable, right? Than, than this because this, despite it has actually a pretty decent story, it has a tale story built into it, mm. but it's unplayable. So yeah, I can't be bothered to care and i i insist i highly insist if you listen to this podcast and you're interested in mobile games don't play this game don't don't give them your time or your money until they fix all these things like that is i just this, deleted this it is, off my phone <laughs> like, this, is, this is this is unfair this yeah. is unfair and they don't seem to care and that's what's um, that's what's maddening to me is that, that's the worst care. part yeah not like they're they're not even trying that that's the worst <sighs> yeah. So any anywho, <laughs> we're gonna move on to better things. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna make a step up, and we go oh, quite a big step up. We're gonna take a leap into oh. a game, a uh, new game, Paper Mario Origami King, or whatever. But I've been playing that too. Man, <laughs> I like it. Uh, uh, I yeah. Don't know I don't know what other people think, but I like it. <laughs> I, I am I I just got through the first area, the talking trees, old tree that got cut down area. <laughs> um, so I, good, it, uh, I'm like good. past the tutorial area, and I'm I'm having a really great time. Largely because number one, the music is really good. Um, yeah, and number two, it's really well written. <laughs> like it is genuinely not like laugh out loud funny, but it's very very clever. Yeah, I'm. I'm I've been smiling while playing, which is yeah. which is good. Yep. You know, I need a game to make me smile. So, I've beaten, uh, I guess, a second boss fight. So I'm, I'm going to be very careful here. Yeah. Um, I've, I've I've beaten the second boss fight, uh, and so uh, different elements are coming into the game. Different aspects are coming into the game. Uh, the boss fight is not like boss fights are not like the normal fights. Uh, yeah, they reverse the whole thing. Right. Yeah. It's, it's very. It's a super requires, cool idea. Yeah, both 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 regular battles and boss battles require you to use your brain a little to like solve the 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 problem yeah so um, if, if anyone hasn't seen the game it's really interesting because normal boss battles has mario in the middle and has four concentric circles around him and part of what <clears throat> excuse me part of what you're doing is there's a bunch of enemies on the screen and you need to it starts off with you need to turn the circles to get them either lined up in a row where you can do like the mario stomp attack or in a square where you can do the 
the hammer attack. So it's this cool puzzle game sort of thing. Like it's, I know the criticism is that it's not a super RPG. I, I don't really care because it's fun to play like these, these puzzles. Um, <laughs> And it starts off with you spinning the rings, and the thing I got just before I uh, stopped playing the last session was I'm able to push and pull an individual column, row? (laughs) They're circles, so I'm not sure what they're (laughs) called, but like one line you can sort of push and pull towards you and away from you. Um, So it's, it's... it it is really fun, and it, even at the beginning, there are some head scratchers where it's like, okay, oh, all right, okay, yeah, I can do some twisting, I can do some pulling, all right, that's cool. So they they later unlock a little a little battle tutorial coliseum thingy. Well, I don't know what to call it, like a battle tutorial thing where you can kind of pra- like it'll throw different situations at you, oh, and cool. you can practice it. And then if you can't solve the puzzle, it gives you the answer. It's kind of like this is what you should have done oh, to get it lined up. I, so that's pretty cool. I I also like that every time you save a toad out in the world, they hang out in the stands cheering you on when you're fighting yeah. battles. <laughs> that's a really nice touch. Um, I just got a a device. Well, I didn't just get it, but I got a device that that uh, rings a little bell whenever there's a toad nearby that you can save, which is kind of Ooh, handy. Nice, because yeah. There are a lot. There are a lot of toads. Yeah, I was sort You'll of surprised never find them. in like the first area where they're like, "All right, here's a bunch. You know, we can start saving these toads," and they're just everywhere. They're in the trees. They're like under logs. They're they're just littered oh. everywhere. <laughs> I remember looking at, at a map after I had just cleared an area thinking, like, I did a pretty good job on clearing out all the toads. Like, I felt like I found a ton. Mm-hmm. I opened up the map, and it's like 50% toads found. And I was <laughs> yeah, like, oh, just... my God, where are they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saved a bunch in that first area, and it's like 23%. It's just like, oh, God. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> they are everywhere. Um, yeah. So I, I I like this game. I know it's not... So everyone always wants to compare every one of the Paper Marios back to um, Thousand Year Door. Yep. And I I really hate doing that comparison because it just it leaves no room for anybody to enjoy anything when you do that. Well, and it, the, the games can't. Special. The games can't evolve <laughs> at that point because it's like, well, right. this isn't like Thousand Year Door, and it's like, yeah, I know, like, uh, it's sorry. not as it's not as bad <laughs> as the last couple because I. I haven't played any of the previous ones, and I I wanted to check them out, but the last couple have gotten reviewed so poorly that it's it, like Sticker Star and I think Color Splash was the other one where people yeah. are just like, don't even, they're just not functionally good games. I, um, I feel bad because I've I've heard from some people that they aren't as bad as the you know critics out there make it. The critics right. just really want Thousand Year Door to, and right. they will accept nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two thousand year door. Yeah, right. So, can you guys give me some Paper Mario history? Because um, I know they had that. Like, does it have anything to do with Super Mario and the Legend of the Whatever Stars? That's not really, Mario? not yeah. really. Okay. I mean, Mario is is mute, uh, like like he was before, and like Bowser is friendlier towards you. So it, it sort of has those through lines, but not. Well, I just mean like, is it the same series? Like, when was the first Paper Mario? So the first Paper Mario he, is one that I never played. That's the N64 one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. But it, it that one was loved for its time. Yeah. Um, uh, and... I, I, they might be the same series. It, it, it sort of feels the same, like, humor-wise and kind of exploration-wise. But this one is... is so not an rpg that it's kind of hard to to even see that through line like there's no you don't have a level you don't have you have experience and you do that or you have health and you do damage but like it kind of doesn't matter that much at at least very early on um so it's, it's sort of hard to make the see if it's a definitive through line there okay yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't compare them at all. They're kind of Mario likes to evolve. <laughs> yeah, and not be and it the is same very good. Thing. Yeah, and I and I like it. It's it's 
it's it's different and i like it that's that's yeah. the that's the things i've gotten from it um yeah. the humor is is good and yep i've i've just basically had the best time with it and yeah so it, it, like that that's a positive uh breath of fresh air for me in terms of games that i've been playing yeah um <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything more to say about the Oregon? No, I don't want to spoil. So no, I'm super early, and I I agree with you. Like I I, I don't. It, it's one of those games where it, it seems like it's kind of a mishmash of a whole bunch of different stuff. But I'm just having a good time with it. That I I'm kind of never thinking of like oh, I wish this had experience. Oh, I wish this had levels. <laughs> I wish this had X, Y, and Z. It's just like I'm playing it. I'm like, yeah, this is fun. Woo! Throwing confetti. Yeah, yeah this is great. Oh, that's yeah. I love throwing confetti. That's that's yeah. uh, that's one of the mechanics in the game is where um, parts of the world, the mache world, has been like destroyed. Yeah, yeah like you see the so, the paper mache like rigging under the world. It's really good, right? And then you you throw confetti on top of the the, the broken areas, and it fills it in until the world uh, repairs itself. Yeah, all it's, the confetti. It's, re- you throw. it's really good. It's so adorable. So yeah. Um, Paper Mario Origami game, pretty great. Yeah, it's a really good time. Door. Stop bashing it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so uh, the last game that I've played is Story of Seasons: Friends of Mineral Town. So ah, yeah, this game is on both Steam and uh, Switch. So if anybody had played the original Harvest Moon game of this, they're gonna notice that it's. One, it's very the same, and two, not the same. Um, okay. So I don't exactly know why. I, I don't know exactly know why they've made this game. The only thing I can assume is because Natsume still own like Natsume will never let go of the name Harvest Moon. No. And they will probably never let you know, them have this game re-released ever again, the original game ever re-released again, at least stateside. The only way that they could ever re-release this game is by rebranding it and remaking it from scratch. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what they've done. Like, like the lines are different. The, the text is different. Some of the elements of the game has shifted around and changed. There's, <clears throat> things they've adopted from the from remakes of the game that didn't exist in the original of Friends of Mineral Town or Harvest Moon sixty four because this wait what was this sixty four no this was uh this was on the PS one right so this is back oh, to right. nature oh my god okay the, the, <laughs> so the history behind this game <laughs> <laughs> so uh it it has different elements added to it it's it doesn't look the same at all to the original they've They've it's still chibi, but it's not the same looking. Right. Um, I I really like it. Uh, if if someone were to ask me, hey, would you recommend Friends of Mineral Town or would you recommend uh, Rune Factory Four? If you are a gamer and you play a lot of games, I would say Rune Factory Four without a doubt. If mm. you are trying to give this to someone who is not a gamer, just, like doesn't want to do combat, just wants to do like farming elements and festivals and light, light gameplay sort of type things, that's that that's this game. Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town is is for the people who want to chill and do like uh like easier type gameplay. Right. That's, not not gamer level <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> uh so they've they've definitely eased up on some of the original elements of the game like uh originally they had rivals where you had characters that would in fact swoop down and sweep uh your your romance partner off their feet and, and oh, carry right. them away and that was in the original that is no longer in this one. They've, oh, they've done goodness. away with that. <laughs> so uh, there's that. They still have like like the first two levels of the rival romance, but like after that, it's it's yeet, it's gone. It's not no That's longer great. there. So, um, you know, there's there's some people who like that, some people who hate that. It's you know even even. Um, uh, they've added two new uh romance targets uh 
and they seem fine to me. I <laughs> I I, I kind of like one of them a lot. Oh, the other thing that they've done. So in the Japanese version of the game, uh, they added something called uh, best friends, where mm. you could uh, romance the same gendered person, and you can have a best friend ceremony where you end up living together as best friends. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the the the, uh, the English version of the game was like, let's just call it what it is. Right. It's marriage. It's marriage. Right. We are calling it marriage. There's n- the best friend system is not best friends. It's marriage. Yeah. And so they've done that. Um, oh, that's. And good. I I like that. I like that. I, if I like, let's just call it what it is because that's what yeah. it is. You're romancing them. You're giving them gifts all the time. You have a ceremony. You have a ceremony. (laughs) You're both wearing dresses or or whatever. Like it, you live together. It that's it, right? (laughs) So uh, I like that is that is a that is a localization change that I really like. XC does amazing localization. They really do. If if I see them behind uh, localizing a game, I know it's going to be quality stuff. So, um. Shout outs to them, and I really appreciate like some of the dialogue in this game is is humorous even because uh, oh, I good. know this isn't the original telling of what what's being written here. This is definitely not the original stuff. But I love I loved when one of the characters actually said "oof" at something. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that that's definitely one way that would be an "oof" moment right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i uh i really like i really like it um it's it's cute uh yeah i'm having a great time i recommend this to people who will not get rune factory 4 because they don't want that sort of experience they just want to farm this is this is your game this maybe is... maybe if you like animal oh. crossing and you're kind of maybe looking for the next thing where it's this still kind of a light like not stressful kind of relaxing thing. It sounds like this might be along the same vein. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would, you, and, would you put this over Stardew Valley? Um so Stardew Valley feels like a more mature, more like a like, more gamey. I, I would say it's well it's it's not even gamey. It's more like it's like a more an adult so, sort of story. Like they have sort of like right. a more mature audience sort of thing whereas mm. this one's like this one has a lot of like adorable rainbow butterflies. Like we're living in the <laughs> blue skies in, all year round. Yeah, right. It's right. like just a wonderful time. Um, yeah, and I, I, I like. I feel like that that might like deter someone where they want something a li- little more, little mm. more serious. But okay. right, this game is. I I love it. I love it for what it is. Like I I really. I don't like Natsume's Harvest Moon, like what they've done with that name. Ooh. The games that they've made with that name, I do not like. This is this this harkens back to the original, the original Harvest Moons. So if if like people are fondly missing those types of things, this is the one. Um, right. And in the same vein, if you're wanting a more Stardew Valley sort of game i feel like that's more rune factory to me like that's it's got a it's more like the next steps take. right this yeah. is like like this game right here is kind of like i would give to like um small children people who just don't want that very serious hard sort of gameplay type thing just mm-hmm. like an introductory game this is really good for them S- someone looking for pure escapism right it's adorable yeah (laughs) and honestly that's all that i've really been playing so what about you boston uh we're gonna talk about paper mario um i finally made some more progress in final fantasy 7 remake um i am after what feels like 30 years i'm finally out of wall market uh since that isn't (laughs) and honestly wall market just sapped my enthusiasm for this game it's just it was too long it I feel like I had the experience with Wall Market that a lot of people felt like they had with the rest of the game, where it's like, yeah, you're taking a 10 minute sequence and you you super stretch it out. I didn't. My my main problem with Wall Market is the entire area felt too big and it was like too twisty turny and 
it needed to be. Like that's what wall market is. I I don't think I don't think Square did anything wrong making that section how it was. I just it's one of those ones where it's just like I, yeah I get it like let's keep let's go to the Don Corneo like the Don Corneo stuff was really great um, they I'm glad they kept the um, <laughs> the the dialogue between uh, Aerith and Tifa about what they're gonna do to Don Corneo they kept that intact which was <laughs> really great because that's one of my favorite parts of the original um, <laughs> I I liked the music rhythm game uh probably unsurprisingly um but a lot of the rest of, and the coliseum is really good um but like honestly a lot of it is just like all right go talk to this person then come all the way back and talk to this person then talk to three people and it, it just it, it was a little much so um i got through that i fought like the the boss that you run into at the very beginning of the sewers and then i saved it now i have to to go back now that i have my a uh, little bit of momentum behind me. Um, but yeah, it, it still enjoying that game, uh, even with the speed bump. Um, but uh, I, uh, I, it's still really good. I need to, I really need to get back to it so I can finish it uh, sometime before we record our top 10 list this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you say something, Eason? Oh, as I say, I've accepted I'm in kind of a, my initial enthusiasm for the game was not shared by anyone. So I, I've accepted that <laughs> this may just be a, a me title all around. I, I do a, agree. The wall market part was, was a bit annoying, but right. I did kind of beat that game in a week. Like, yeah, <laughs> so it's, uh, you, I will never uh, tamp down someone's enthusiasm, especially about games and especially about RPGs. Cause everyone's just so, so sour about RPGs all the time that um, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that, we can have this show and be like, RPGs are great, uh, as long as they work, most importantly. That's an important asterisk. Right. right. <laughs> um, my last one this this month, just real short, um, Final Fantasy V Forge Out Fiesta has completely hit a brick wall for me. Um, I don't have a great group on the <clears throat> second run I have, and I am in the second world literally on the doorstep of the forest of more and that was like a couple of weeks ago and I'm like i really really do not want to do the seal crystal fight with the team i have because i think it's largely going to come down to time mages trying to hit the crystals with Raviga, whatever the second level gravity is <laughs> and if that lands then just dumping comet as fast as you can before they kill you and um i don't want to do that <laughs> so <laughs> i have i've been sort of hesitating to get back to it and I, honestly we now have it's august now so this is the last month of uh, forge out fiesta and i might just finish one this year and that might be okay uh, maybe i'll just have of a quiet year instead of finishing four or five like i usually do <laughs> um and then next year hopefully i can play it on an analog pocket if i can get a get a pre-order secured for that uh which would be great um but that's all i've been playing so let's move on to our rpg releases for august 2020 final fantasy crystal chronicles remastered edition comes out on switch ps4 ios and android on the 27th uh couple of reminders here uh it is cross play so if you got a bunch of people you know, sitting in the same room, you can play uh, across a bunch of different devices. It doesn't have local multiplayer, um, so plan accordingly, however Weird. that's going to work. Um, and it does have voice acting, which maybe won't turn out great. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. That, that game is... That game's weird, but... Uh, I'm glad they're I'm glad they're trying it again, and I'm glad they're putting online multiplayer so uh, people can play it together. It, it needs it. <laughs> yes, yeah, it, it very yeah, badly. There's it. not local. You would have thought that would have been a priority considering what the game originally was, but right. Yeah, yeah I, I wonder if it's one of those things where it's like from a design perspective because the original one was hooking up a bunch of GBAs to a yeah. GameCube. So I wonder if it's like, well, we could just remaster this and put online multiplayer, 
or we could like refactor the whole thing. And I wonder if it was like, well, that might be that might be too difficult. So, um. you know, I guess the reality is like Nintendo Switch, iOS and Android, everyone has their own screen in that situation. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you're pretty much doing the same thing. Yeah. 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 And I'm hoping it works out well. I'm I'm curious to see how uh, how reviews do for this. I um, I personally love the original, but yes. it really has to have you have to play it with other people. Like that's, that's solo. A must. It's not great. <laughs> yeah. It can't be that good solo. There's no way yeah. it's good solo. I, in my own mind, like I had fun specifically because it was all of us playing together. Right. So. That's a huge part of it. Yeah. I just. <laughs> remember playing that game like we were in our early 20s i think at that point and like mm-hmm. four grown dudes in a tiny bedroom <laughs> with tiny <laughs> gbas up to this thing <laughs> yeah. yeah paper rock scissors to see who holds the uh who holds the bucket the crystal. Yep. yeah yeah <laughs> wherever that thing was yeah <laughs> Uh, next release here is Wasteland 3 coming out pc ps4 and xbox one on the 28th um Ooh. yeah m- Musim said at the beginning, like, didn't he backed this and didn't realize it was coming out? I, yeah. I feel like they've been talking about this for a really long time, and then suddenly it's just coming out at the end of the month. So, I don't. I probably need to start like investigating, like, what tier I bought, and like, right. should I be expecting something physical in the mail? At some right? Point? Should like, I be getting a key, or am I getting a disc? <laughs> like, what platform is it on? Yeah, I have no idea what I did. Like, I backed this one. I think this was a fig launch one. Oh, i think you're right yeah and i think that's what throws me off because i get so much kickstarter updates from all the other projects and fig i get no emails from hardly, yeah so. i don't know if fig is even running anymore hmm yeah hmm. i don't know uh, and last but certainly not least moon is coming out on the switch on the 27th uh this was originally titled moon remix rpg adventure when it came out in japan on the ps1 um this is this is a super important RPG release. Uh, this is a game that was, as soon as it came out in Japan in like 97, it was guaranteed it was not going to come out over here because it's really weird and seemed impossible to translate. Um, thankfully, it's coming out now. It's The reason it's called a, a re- remix RPG is because it essentially takes place in a world after the bad guy has been beaten. So... It's largely what happens after an RPG is done, um, and it it has really inspired a whole ton of uh, really big games. Most notably, Undertale uh, took a lot of inspiration from this. Um, so it's supposed to be this kind of really weird, quirky, fantastic thing, um, and it's great to see that it's uh, it's coming out later this month. Um, let's move on to the news stories here. Nintendo had a third party direct mini third party for anyone who is sort of pooping their pampers over this one um there are two big rpg releases from this uh first one is shin megami tensei 3 nocturne is getting hd remaster on the switch uh number woo! one yes <laughs> number one most importantly woo. uh but also for anyone let's rem- let's remember a whole bunch of important things about uh nocturne number one it looks incredible and the soundtrack is incredible. Number two, it's hard. It is brutally difficult. So, thankfully, Atlas this time is putting in a, uh, I don't even remember what they're calling the super easy difficulty. Safety. Safety. <laughs> well, no, they named it something different this Did time. they name that, it different? Oh. Yeah, it like it even more clearly is like, this is super duper easy. Um, so, if anyone hasn't played any of the SMT games... This is, if that e super easy difficulty is really super easy, this is a, this will probably be a really great place to start. Um, cause Nocturne is really good. Um, and it's also very brutally difficult. Um, also a reminder, this doesn't have Dante from, uh, Devil May Cry in it because it's the, <laughs> whatever the third version that came out on the PS2 in Japan was called, <laughs> like Future Perfect Devil Edition, whatever it was. So it has uh, Rido from the uh, SMT spinoff games, which remaster those next because they're incredible and no one played them. They're really good. Um, uh, so go check that out. I don't think there's a release date for that yet. It's next year, I think. Um, but I, I think that's all we have. Um 
And then they showed off a new trailer for SMT5 saying that it's coming in 2021 and they're aiming for a simultaneous worldwide release, uh, which is crazy for Atlas because that I don't know if they've done that before with anything. Not, Not that I can recall. No, usually no. it's like, it's coming out in Japan this year, don't stream anything. And that's coming out in the US next year, don't stream anything. And like, that's really, <laughs> that's really about all we get. Um, you know, maybe that's why they're doing that. Because uh, they got probably. beat up so much on their crazy stream restrictions on 5. Um, mm-hmm. And they, d- they pulled the stream restrictions on Persona 5 Royal too. Where it's like, oh, yeah, cool. You can stream it up until this point. It's like, come on. Guys, you, got, you got to stop. Like, yeah, listen. Yeah, you got, yeah, you got to cool. Uh, some, this, some... Is, this is free advertising, honestly. Yeah. Like, I, I've never seen anybody just be like, it, like, the thing is, is like, nobody out there is like, you know what I'd rather do? I'd rather just watch someone and that will be my way of getting getting through this game a lot of people who watch the game were either a never going to ever buy it in any right. point in time in history or b they've already bought it they've already played it and now they want to re-experience the whole thing again through right. a fresh set of eyes because they can't brainwash themselves or they just want to <laughs> or like there's no demo and they just want to check out like an hour or yeah. two of actual gameplay um, right yeah it's so- it's frustrating so honestly my only real fear on these releases is that they release them right next to each other like (laughs) please that put them like a half year apart yeah yeah, like like nocturne comes out in july and five comes out in august and it's like why (laughs) i can't i can't go through both of these good about not doing that yeah I, i don't think they've i don't think i think they've they they're pretty good at understanding the market and not yeah, I trust Atlas. I don't trust Sega. <laughs> Sega's well, messed yeah, that's up true. too many times in the past. Well, like, right. the thing is, is you got to remember now they've uh, like Sega's staff has actually adopted Atlas staff. Like they've actually fused mm. into one another now. So mm. like the the head of different heads of of of, of Sega are now ex or like ex atlas people they are now in charge over those areas that's this they put on the earrings they, they did the fusion dance like every they, they it's all together <laughs> they did fuse um right. so it's even though atlas has been like absorbed it's actually been absorbed in a way that that kind of gives atlas more power than they than they sort had, of like culturally impactful oh, please do sega has no idea what to do with its properties like <laughs> the only property I, they I seem think... to know what to do with is yakuza and it's like they it... they they're they're making all the right choices with that franchise and it's incredible seeing them succeed for once I mean, that is amazing the I more just... recent sonics have been good too yeah, because they gave him to someone else. <laughs> right. <laughs> they said, "Here's this dude, the Christian, Christian, what, Christian Whitehead, I think his name is." It's like, look, you're a super crazy Sonic fan. <laughs> what do you think you'd do with a game? And he's like, "Oh, here, X, Y, and Z." And they're like, "All right, go ahead, just just go make right. it." Yeah, that that's a smart choice, Sega. Good job. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, that's all of our news stories for this month, which means we're at the end of the episode. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. If you'd like to visit us, do so at pickinguppixels.com. Everywhere to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page. Patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers, like we talked about at the uh, top of the show. You get cool, uh, just like a ton of, I, I just look, there's like hundreds of episodes of, uh, of stuff up there. Early access, behind the scenes stuff, exclusive stuff, all up there. $5 a month is the recommended tier. That gets you everything. And it's per month, not per episode. So just five bucks a month. Uh, if you're a patron already, super appreciate it. If you're not, head on over there and uh, go sign up. Uh, Meet some where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find the nexus of all my audio endeavors at jbaudio.net. And Mina, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitch or on YouTube under Mina K.O. Rocket. And you can find all my podcasts at e1m1.com, and I'll put in a free plug for destinyemblemcollector.com over here. If you're crazy enough about Destiny Emblem Collectors or uh, Destiny Emblems like me, you can find out where to get all of them over there. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you all next month. Bye. Bye.